friends, I'm here to talk about a few things today, one of those things being mental games. But first off, I met up with somebody named Cole who watches my videos. He was stopping by Salt Lake City and he said, hey, I'd like to meet up downtown. So we met up downtown. He's a photographer too, so what photographers do when they want to be social with other photographers is they go on photo walks. Now a social photo walk is different than an individual photo walk. An individual photo walk is a very focused endeavor about taking photos that you feel good about and challenging yourself or that's what it is for me. A social photo walk is sort of like, we're gonna carry around our cameras and not actually use them while we talk to each other and walk around downtown. If you're my wife in the other room, it's because she's on a phone call with the president of phone calls. And uh, you know, phone calls are a bit in a bit of a dip right now, so they're trying to come up with a better marketing strategy to make phone calls hip and happening for all the young folk these days, doing all their Snapchats and music lies. So Cole's a rad fellow. We had a fantastic time. We had some lovely conversations about creativity and street photography. We did all the social things, such as talking. I, I may have held his hand, but I forget. Now, one of the things we spoke about on this wildly, wildly intimate photo walk is street photography and how it's a mental game. How it is about you overcoming things in yourself. You're in a battle with your own brain. We got into a lot of interesting territory and one thing that I have been thinking about recently and that I mentioned is that anticipation is something that can be incredibly devastating to the human. I think to give a good example to this, I have to use an illustration of a living being that does not use anticipation as a mechanism in life, and that is a dog. If you're taking your dog to the doggo hospital to get his reproductive organs chopped off, as we did with my buddy Cooper. Cooper, do you have balls still? Mm, what you say? Well. The day we took him to take away his, his privilege of having children one day away from him, he did not know what was going on. He walked into a place and there were some people, they were like, hey, how's, how's it going? He was like, oh, this is gonna be fun. What's in here? Is there a treat? Can I poop in here? Before he knows it, he wakes up two hours later, he's laying on a table and something's missing. There's no anticipation leading up to this experience for him. Therefore, he's a much happier being for that. With humans, it's different. If I was going to get my reproductive organs chopped off at a doggo hospital, I would have a lot of anticipation leading up to that. I would be very nervous, it would be a very difficult experience, and it could actually affect how the experience is carried out from my perspective, how I deal with that thing. I may not deal with it as well as I want to, but I will definitely be miserable. The reason I know this is I've had other versions of this. Uh, I am blessed to still have baby privileges, but just today I went in for a filling on this tooth right here and this tooth right here. I have a great dentist, he did a wonderful job, but leading up, I always get nervous for these things. And I've had a lot of experience in dental work. I think we underestimate the power of anticipation in our lives. It's one of the major driving forces in what makes us unhealthy mentally and what causes us to not perform as well as we would like to. Now anticipation and nerves have a tremendous benefit. I'm not saying that we should be rid of them. I'm saying that we should learn how to, to manage them and control them. Street photography is it's a game where you're engaging your anticipatory nervousness intentionally in order to grow yourself. Why are you engaging this anticipatory nervousness? It's because you're engaging with people. There is a social consciousness in your brain that can be very difficult and cause you to cave into that fear and not take a photo of somebody across the street because you're scared they might look at you or what they might think of you or uh, how they may interact with you and how you will respond, which tends to be more of a, along the lines of what I deal with in the street photography realm. I'm more concerned about how I respond to somebody than how they respond to me. I don't know if I'm alone in that, or I don't know if I'm an anomaly in that, because it seems like most people tend to really worry about what other people are going to do. I have an understanding of people that helps me approach interacting with them from the perspective of they're going to do what they're going to do because people in the world are, are, are anywhere from different than you to insane and you can't change that. What's most important is how you react to them and so that's the scary part. For me. If you're taking a street portrait of somebody, same idea except you're initiating a conversation with them intentionally and that can be incredibly daunting. 
Either way, it is a mental game that you have to you have to face with furiosity. Now, whatever you're doing in life, I believe it is a good idea to build mental stamina. And how do you build mental stamina? You go into situations that stretch you and and punch you in the mouth. Now, if you want this, you're in luck because life will provide these situations for you. For me, my feelings are one of those situations. It forces me to deal with the intensity that my brain, uh, the havoc that, that it can wreak on me. But what I would suggest is that it's a good idea on a frequent basis to create these situations for yourself so that you can become more mentally staminous. <laughs> Is that a word? Staminous. I typed in staminous and my search bar auto-completed to say staminous. Is it a word? So I'll use that one. The dog was staminous fetching. Staminous. Full of stamina, according to wordcentral.com. The trusted, oh, Merriam Webster, come on. Fun fact, Merriam invented the three-legged glass coffee table and Webster was a very staminous pole vaulter. Where else can you put trust that would be more trustworthy? And a bit? Now, one way I think you can become more mentally staminous is by looking for situations in everyday life that you can intentionally engage with. And these are these may normally be situations that you would turn your head away from in fear. What you can do instead is stare into the fear, deal with it. Face it. Now, perhaps you've never seen The Office, in which case I assume you make horrible decisions with your life. You probably like the Big Bang Theory. <laughs> Sorry, Mom and Dad. And uh, you should probably stop drinking that Diet Coke. Or maybe you like The Office, but regardless, I'll illustrate clearly for everyone. Pam is somebody who has a bit of a courage issue at the beginning of the timeline of The Office, and as the timeline progresses forth, she starts to intentionally take on situations that will make her more brave. For example, there's this one episode where she's built up for frustration. She feels like there's things that she wants to say to everybody, but she can't. And there's a point where she decides she's going to, one, walk on coals, which was connected to the story of what was going on in the episode. And that's a bravery thing, right? Mental stamina overcoming the, the third degree burning of your feet. And then she runs over to her coworkers and just blurts out everything that she feels like she has to say. She overcomes this barrier in her head. And as the timeline goes on, you see her self-motivate to take on scary situations and grow herself. And by the end, she she will bravely say whatever she is thinking. She becomes a more confident, more honest person, and that character arc is fascinating, just like all the other character arcs are fascinating in The Office. Back to my filling. I decided I wanted to try a new technique to deal with the anxiety leading up to getting this filling. So what tends to happen to me with things like this is there is this cloud of monstrous awfulness that forms in my head. And what I do is I look away from it. I go, I, this is this makes me nervous. I don't like it. I just don't even want this to happen. I want this to go away. And I don't, I don't take that cloud and turn it into a, a singularity and face it. When it's a cloud, it's vague and undefined, which makes things worse. What I've learned is that I need to stare it in the face, the thing that is scaring me, boldly put myself in the moment with that that thing, that fear, and deal with it, and say I'm coming for you. Face what's real about it, face what's scary about it, face what's unknown about it, face what's good about it, and say I'm going forth regardless. I'm pressing into this. You have to say to yourself, I'm here to deal with this monster. I found that as soon as I did that, the feeling of anxiety dissipated within me. And so I started embarking on this mental game of trying to deal with all of the facets of what I was concerned about in that way, and it helped. Back to anticipation. Like I said, if you don't manage it well, it can be unhealthy. But I'm starting to see that the way to deal with getting away from unhealthy to anticipation is not to ignore the thing that's scaring you. This unhealthy anticipation is an anxious response that comes from you not facing your fear. It's a cloud that you get stuck in when everything in your head is undefined and scary. When you stare directly into your fear, you are taking that anticipation and pushing it aside and saying, I'm, I'm done with you, I'm not dealing with you. 
dealing with the problem. So Jeremy Cohen is a very talented photographer in New York City and I've spoken with him about his work and one of the things we spoke about is how he deals with fear in the type of photography that he's doing which involves him walking up to strangers on the street and taking their portrait. Once you sort of decide and you decide that you want to include a human element and that involves you engaging with people and it makes you really scared inside uh <laughs> how uh, how have you overcome that for yourself yeah so doing this project at first was first was totally out of my comfort zone uh which is weird now because nowadays it's turned into like i could go up to any stranger and ask to photograph them that's where people want to be and right. I, I think it's hard so, for, it's hard for me personally it's ba it's, yeah it's baby steps man like uh i at first i was super nervous and it wasn't until i gave like this is just the way i work once i gave myself this incentive i knew i had to do it because I, I i i promised myself this so mm -hmm. that i was going to do one portrait a day so you know in my mind i was like okay it it was, yeah, it was almost like asking someone out on a date. Almost. It's like that intimate of an experience. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. It's like so, doing that over and over every day. I, that's a fantastic way to explain yeah. it. Yeah. And on top of that, like, it's made me grow not only as a photographer, but as a person in the sense that I can approach strangers, whether it's like someone I'm interested in or someone business related that I want to talk to that I'm a little nervous. Like now I just, I'm in the mindset. I'd say I credit it to this project that just go for it. Like don't miss, you know don't miss any opportunities like shoot my shot so mm -hmm. and i think that's an important thing to do because you know yeah what's the saying you make zero percent of the shots you don't take is that it mm -hmm. yeah, absolutely. yeah so. absolutely two points of interest to what he just said one he mentioned how it has helped him in life overall to take on this very specific project that involves facing fears and two he said shoot your shot and i would add to that stare into your fear boldly. Over time, you will build a reflex to look away from what scares you. Stare at it. Face it. Take it on. Okay, that's it for this video. I would love to hear your thoughts, including how you have learned to deal with fear better in your own life. Have a lovely day. Goodbye.